Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiobu. It is Saturday morning, and that means we've got another episode of Kimetsu no Yaiba. Yay! Uh, last time, and for the last couple of episodes, really, we've been recuperating and resting a little bit after some some major battles, and uh, getting ourselves healed up, getting getting a little bit better, recuperating, rehabilitating, and doing some training, mostly Tanjiro. Uh, Zenitsu and Inosuke kind of bowed out of the intensive training regimen that they were going through, and had some actually funny comedic moments in the last episode which is which is nice it's it's nice to see things and have them work and i think they worked for me um i think a lot of that was that they went way over the top especially with some of the zenitsu scenes just like throwing a lot of animation and insanity uh towards his insanity um but in the course of of our training uh tanjiro has discovered that there may be some kind of uh uh, ability that he can use to maintain his concentration breathing all the time, which somebody pointed out in the comments, and I should have gone and grabbed it because it was really good. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to do it right now. I'll just cut this. I'll just cut this. Yep. Uh, so shout outs to Reclaw La for uh, writing total concentration breathing, full cowling, which is exactly, exactly what it would be. Um, effectively, spreading the energy out at probably at a much less intensive state, but giving him constant benefits of, of his breathing and getting much stronger in the process. Uh, part of the, the like training or rating regimen for that seems to be blowing into a gourd until it goes, uh, which apparently Kanao, who we will talk about in a moment, uh, can explodify a gigantic, massive gourd thing. So Tanjiro has got a long way to go, which is nice. And maybe is going to seek out Kano and, like, get some information from her. Figure out what she does with her total concentration breathing stuff since she's clearly a little bit ahead of him. Um, speaking of which, this episode is going to be titled Tsukuko Kanao Tsuyuri. Uh, that was a bad pronunciation, but we're just going to roll with it. Um, so... I'm expecting this is going to be an episode focused on her, potentially her backstory, potentially some other information about her, who she is, how she got to where she is, and I am excited for that because she's an interesting, mysterious character who's obviously rather competent, um, as demonstrated in the, 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 the exam that they took, she made it through with flying colors, and uh, is a Tsukuko, seems to be being groomed to be potentially the next insect pillar uh, if our Ara Ara Shinobu girl... Uh, should fall or should for some reason retire or whatever um so she's a, a rather powerful demon slaying young lady and i would like to know more about how she got to be that way and how she became who she is uh she also as far as i know still hasn't spoken um i don't remember somebody mentioned that she may have spoken during the the the, the exam thing but i don't remember that at all i do not remember her speaking so i'm still running on the assumption that she has not spoken at all and if she breaks that silence it'll be interesting uh it could be a totally wrong assumption just throwing that out there in any case i'm excited to find out who this person is at all like any more information um and you know get get some more of this training stuff which has been cute but hopefully we start start building towards something else we'll see uh not that much left of the series for now i am certain that it will get more of a series soon uh but for now there's not that much left to uh to to do not that much time to build to like a major awesome super crazy arc or anything so we got some time to 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 spend having fun or exploring interesting characters uh one other thing that i would be I'll, I'll be on the lookout for any information on is the flame pillar not fire pillar somebody told me that there's a difference and so i will attempt to make sure that i use the right one i believe it's the flame pillar rengoku going with that might be wrong uh has gone off on his own to do some mission and the way he went off to do that mission screams like oh shit this guy's not coming back uh so if we want to turn our attention to him and like see what he's up to in the world, that would, might be kind of exciting. Um, in any case, I, I'm, I'm done blabbing at the beginning here. Let's go ahead and jump into this episode and see what we see. Uh, I have the episode up and ready to go. It's zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction video. You can find the picture-in-picture -picture version with the video up there in the description, and you can find the timer-based version, which you're currently watching if you're hearing me say this, up on YouTube. The picture-in-picture -picture version will have video in it, but it won't have discussion at the end because it's much easier to keep them short and upload them there. Bitchute doesn't do well with long videos at all. Um, and Mega has bandwidth caps, so, you know. 
Uh, and then the timer-based version on YouTube will not have the video in it. It will have subs down there, and it will have a timer in it. Uh, it will have discussion at the end as well, so stick around for that if you want it. And uh, if you are going to grab your own copy of Kimetsu no Yaiba episode... I didn't even say the episode number. It's 25. Uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba episode 25, then... Uh, and and sync it up with the timer based version you can you can do that just get it ready because the beep beep timer to count you down to zero when we'll start the episode is coming at you right now this is a, a pretty picture of a pretty house with pretty flowers that's what i see on the first frame all right let's go there's the the yeah okay Are those smacker beaters? <laughs> I like them. Whack. <laughs> you asked for it, man. I move this slightly down. All right. Chrysalis of a butterfly. First and fourth. <laughs> smack, 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 smack. Ow, I just stabbed myself with a pencil. Like right in between the fingers. Yeah, there's a little chunk of lead embedded in my hand. I'll deal with it later. <laughs> hand over hand. Ooh. Tough stuff. Cool. Ah. Ah. Hmm. The cup game? No. Tag. Wow. Oh. The downside of Naruto running. <laughs> Later, bitch. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> nope. <laughs> Oof. Mmm. Gordon stuff. <gasps> oh! I didn't think that would work. It worked. Awesome. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> hmm. All the girls around Tanjiro. Hmm. <laughs> Seems about right. You're getting left in the dust, buddy. Hey, birdie. You just gotta fall asleep, man. <laughs> But you're not. <laughs> He's really just talking to himself, you know? Down the hatch, buddy. I like this piece of background music. <laughs> what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That does. But they don't wanna. <laughs> oh, hi. Mama, ara ara. <laughs> Oh, that's so snarky. <laughs> oh, this, this, this pokes his pride, you know? <laughs> Please don't, there, there is a shortage of, of perfect breasts in the world. It would be a shame to lose yours. <laughs> Dolly Zoom. Memory. Memory. History. Past. The moment of meeting Shinobu, potentially? 
Holy fuck, what? That's her. Who is he? Brother? And we have a voice. You snapped. Okay, so she lost emotion. Something like that. Is that Shinobu? Oh, wow. It's Shinobu's uh, uh, teacher. She's a slave. Does she have a kanji in her... In her eye? Kanai Kocho. Kanao Tsuyuri. She doesn't have a name. It's not a kanji. It's just scratches. Back the fuck up. Yep, probably. Bye-bye. Okay, so it's her cloak. Ooh, this is interesting. <gasps> well, wonder where she gets it. <laughs> scrub, 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 scrub. That's really cute. And she's crying. Yeah. Hmm. That sounds like Moogie. <laughs> ah. So literally two face, but a child. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sure he's not happy with you. <laughs> He's gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Assistant? Hmm. The heck? Kinda, yeah. But they didn't have that when he gave them to him. He wants them he wants them all scarred up, you know? Smash, 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 smash. Yep. <laughs> now you got two angry blacksmiths. <laughs> Smack. <laughs> All right, back to it. Otto. Oh. Progress. Much faster, but that's the song of Kamado Tanjiro. <laughs> Gotta catch up. Yay. Yay. No. Oh, yes. I mean, never, but yes. Mm. About Kanao? Oh. Yeah, you've got something that's outside the realm of what anybody else understands. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why somebody told me there's a difference. Oh, okay. But he's off on a mission. We have to go out and find him.
if we want answers. Ooh. Why would they be so specific about it? It's, it doesn't sound like it's just like a dictionary definition thing. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. That's true. You better be. Did she just speak telepathically to him? Like, fucking what? <laughs> okay. Ooh. Big fucking train. Is this where Rengoku is? Ah, it's a big demon. Oh my. Oh, that's nice and creepy. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. I forgot my tea. I left it in the kitchen and didn't notice while recording this. Only now I reach for it. It's like, where's my tea? Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> mm. Like a bubble bath, bath salts type of wait, not bath salts. Not that. That's the wrong thing. <laughs> there we go. Ah. It's a weird place to end the, the series on, but okay, yeah. Cool. Okay, first and foremost, before anything else, I'll cut out the, the, the time that I spend looking for it, but I need to figure out who the older sister's voice actress is because it sounded really familiar, and I'm going to probably kick myself. Um, so, give me a minute. I Kayano. Quickly. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's not Moogie. <laughs> okay, well, the the primary place that I recognize her is not Moogie. I thought hearing her voice that it was it was it was Moogie for some reason. It just it reminded me of that. But um, 
No, the place I most recognize this character's voice actress from is is Sangatsu. That's Akari, which is amazing. Uh, I want to hear her voice again to see if I can if I can place it. Okay, here we go. Oh my god, yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Wow. So that's that's Akari. Uh a, a pretty perfect casting for like a caring older sister character, which is what it, this appears to be. There's a lot of interesting stuff just in the in the clothing. Um like now uh what color thing? Okay, Kano has a, a red and green one in her hair, which I believe is what the older sister did as well. And then, yeah, same one, but only on one side. And then Shinobu always had the, the purple, I suppose. But then Shinobu has seemingly inherited the, the cloak. That's so cool. There's, there's this very clear sense of lineage and, like, uh, passing down... The ways of, of, of the foals. The ways of the, the, I assume, insect pillar. And it creates this, like, this Kanao is, like, is to Shinobu what Shinobu was to Kanai. Kanai. I can never. Okay. That's, that's really cool. There are a lot of really interesting elements in this episode. Um, and I think, I think they did the, the, they managed to do the transition between like flashback and memory uh, from Kanao's perspective and the actual goings on of the episode uh, really fluidly using using the coin as a, a, like an object of focus for that. So she focuses on it. We get that that dolly zoom where like the background is moving along with her. Um, and then that sort of signals to us that we're going into her mind and then we're there and we see her origins just a little bit, just enough to get a feeling for it, just to get enough to understand this character and maybe why she's not super talkative or emotional at all. The the girl smacking him with with uh, uh, carpet smackers is freaking hilarious, and I love it. Um, some of the some of the goofy moments in this episode def definitely landed pretty well. Some of them were just meh. Uh, more training, good stuff. More training, good stuff. Facing off, the the scenes of them running around are are distinctly and noticeably like the place where where we put some cool stuff. Uh, there's a lot of interesting spatial stuff going on here, uh, just because of the way we choose to shoot it, we're like up close and personal in the fray, and having them move in and out of of Death of Field, uh, toward and away from the camera. Here we see the downsides of Naruto running, unless you're fast enough to get out of the way. <laughs> and we do get a gourd blow, and, and he, he blows the shit out of that gourd. Still got a ways to go. I quite like this. I like this as, okay, there's a, a really common and, and frequent shonen trope where the main character is super into the training stuff, and whoever's around him isn't maybe as into it, uh, but because of how gung-ho the main character is, they get swept up in it. And usually it's just that they get swept up in it. Here, the the characters, the side characters who are training with him, or the, the deuteragonists, I suppose, um, are genuinely resistant to doing the training and have to break through it. Not not because they are, they're like, wow, I want to be like Tanjiro, but because they're fucking jealous and and kind of kind of like uh, not snarky. That's not the word. They don't do it out of necessarily pure motivations. They're uh, made to feel a bit of guilt and shame watching Tanjiro continues taking strides forward and make it, you know, put in the effort and succeed. And it 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 all comes down to the conversation that Shinobu ha has with them where they sort of, she lays it out there kind of, that, that um, there's no reason that you can't. You're just stopping yourself by refusing to work. This is your fault if you're not making it. And it rings true. And they are, especially Zenitsu, who has this conversation with the bird. Um, as far as I know, the, the bird that he's talking to is not actually speaking to him. So he's just running through his own internal dialogue between himself and his subconscious self, where his subconscious self is telling him, you got to fucking work, dude. You got you to gotta put in the effort if you want to make it. 
geez, it's at the crack of dawn. He's already gone off to train. There's this this sadness in his expression. I actually I really like this image in particular. I like the light falling across him and the the shadow on his face and just the sadness in his eyes. It reads to me like a little bit of mild shame, like because that is exactly what is happening. The phrase is he is being put to shame by Tanjiro's effort, right? He is being put to shame, and the result of that is that he actually feels ashamed because he knows that he could be working. Whether or not persevering every day is draining or hard, of course it is, but it's the way to get what you want. Can't get the hang of anything even if he shows it to me for hours. <laughs> yeah. Why can't you just say you're working hard too? Why can't you just pat my back with platitudes and be like, no, you're, you're doing everything you can while you lay here in this bed and, and struggle to drink shitty medicine? Like, no, Zenitsu. Get off your ass. If you want progress, you got to work. So eventually Inosuke, who gets a little bit less of this, but we can kind of assume that he's undergoing something similar, uh, prompts them to go and talk to Shinobu about what's being worked on and... So they try. And then they talk to Tanjiro, and Tanjiro is really bad at explaining stuff. But then Shinobu comes in and does a thing. And this is by far, I think, my favorite part of the episode. Uh, because Shinobu here does a thing, which is she she just like takes a little tiny needle and jams it in Inosuke's pride. <laughs> just like tick, 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 tick. Uh, and it gets to him. It gets to him. This is just a basic skill. Anybody could do it. You could do it. I love that there's this calm state of mind behind her at the same time. Why wouldn't you be able to? You can totally do it. It should be child's play. Why can't you do it? And then we get this, which... No, please, please don't do that, Inosuke. Those... No. There is a shortage of perfect breasts in the world, please. And then the... the she... She kind of ashalads this, where she jabs Inosuke in his pride and then uh, uh, appeals to Zenitsu's mm, nature. Let's say his nature. Uh, just by getting a little bit close to him. A little bit of little bit of hand-to-hand -hand physical con con contact. That's all you need. And he turns beet red and off they go. Uh, I also I love the, the ridiculous gesturing and and yelling random phrases that Tanjiro does throughout this just like yeah it's great ah uh, and then I, I I have this weird sinking feeling it's not sinking necessarily it could be done really well but I, I have this feeling that Kanao is going to be uh interested in Tanjiro it's going to fall for him um and I'm quite okay with it so far in the story, we have not had the usual sort of every character falls for the main character type of thing going on, which I really appreciate. It's it's nice. Not that there are that many female characters of similar age who would be falling for him that we've met, but we also don't have Kano just like fall head over heels for the guy who walks in. And likewise, the, the other girl who's been training them doesn't seem to be doing anything of the sort, although she does have twin tails, so maybe it's just the tsundere talking. We'll see. Um... But here she goes, she pulls out the coin, flips it, we are immediately at intent on this, and this alone. Flips that coin, and then here's that, uh, I'm calling it a dolly zoom, it's not, it's not quite, and even if it were, there's no camera, but the effect is the same as a dolly zoom, which is a, a, a difference in motion between the stuff in far depth of field and the stuff up close. Um... While maintaining focus on her. So we're going inside her head at this point. And we go to, from this rather beautiful place where they are, we go to this ratty, destroyed, horrible location where there seems to be just death and absolute poverty everywhere. Uh, and we see this guy who, I don't know, may or may not be her father. She did say that her parents sold her... Uh, I'm going to assume that this is her father and those are the, and perhaps their other children. I don't know. One day, a snap. Because the only thing binding her is her ability to feel. And so she's, she's lost that. 
just become sort of glazed over, you know? I'm not sure what the exact word would be, but but non-responsive, nicatatonic, and the line, and I never knew pain again. And then the choice to have this this eye catch with her just with a faint smile that she almost always wears. But that means that it's probably a pretty empty smile, right? Just a mask. Not even a mask to cover anything, just indifference. Which is kind of horrifying. Oh, I, speaking, also, I like that other eye catch, this one. I like that a lot. Uh, at the beginning of the episode, I'm not sure where it was. Actually. There, okay. Yeah. I like this imagery as well. We've got a, a butterfly just seeming to come out of its chrysalis. And I assume that this is symbolism for Kanao herself. Evolving a little bit. Quite interesting. So she flips a coin. We don't know what she's necessarily deciding, but she she ends up walking away. And then we have this. No name. Hands off. Chuck some money into the air. Pretty cool, Shinobu. Pretty freaking cool. And off we go. Uh, this scrubbing hair moment is gorgeous. And beyond that, uh, we're... Hmm. I'm, it's actually unclear. There is water streaming down, down into her eyes. And if she means beyond psychological pain to physical pain as well, then it may just be streaming over her eyes and out. But I don't know. I It, it seems like there's a very distinct in, attempt to show us tears just flowing down her face. No, we can see the water fly, flowing into it and then out. I don't know. So she has to be ordered to do anything until she is given... Until she is given the coin. You can decide by flipping this coin. She's so adorable. And then this line. When you uh, fall in love with somebody, some boy someday, you'll change too. This also leads me to believe that she's going to fall for Tanjiro. Uh, quietly. I also, I like that shot where we go from little hand to big hand. Same hand, same coin. Really works. And I'm not sure what was on the coin, which side ended up up, but she walks away from them. I assume she was deciding whether to go and engage with them. But I don't know. So... <laughs> The sword makers arrive, been waiting for that for a while, and uh, exactly as Tanjiro feared, he is really fucking mad. <laughs> just, just like, gives the hat over. I'm gonna fucking kill ya. <laughs> and we go, we go crazy on the, the almost impact frame-esque things here to, to really accentuate it. It's fun. A very passionate man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking at these swords. So when we do turn to look at these swords, that's like happening in universe, right? They are just cold steel, and now the 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 bluey gray of the steel is is billowing up them from I assume his power. Like we see waves of power stuff over him, so I assume that's what's happening. First time I've ever so forged for a dual wielder, goes and finds some rocks, starts cutting some gouges in them. <laughs> hey, preferences. So then we do another one of these. I didn't notice any reused shots, and we have a victory sequence for Tanjiro. We're doing it. We're making it. We're winning. And then this, this kind of cute moment where he's like, I don't want to splash her with this. This is gross. I've been splashed with it a bunch. Dink. It's very cute. And then in this moment, 
Zenny to any Nosuke are watching and are like, oh god, we gotta we gotta catch up. Which is great. I think I like that a lot. Okay, and then he a- asks about the Hinokami Kagura. This is interesting. I don't I don't know if there's anything to really build off of to speculate on this, but this is very interesting. Why would they be so specific? Either it I would guess they are trying to hide the existence of the Hinokami Kagura for whatever reason or uh they just don't know about it, but e- if they just didn't know about it then there would be no reason to have a tradition of of ensuring that you call the flame breathing flame breathing and definitely not fire breathing i have the feeling that it's like a lost art like a lost pillar and maybe the the master would uh would know something about it maybe somebody a little bit older might know something and maybe rengoku would know something i don't know definitely interesting though uh, we also got a couple of other interesting things the mention of the sword forger's homeland as a, a place which could be maybe gone to at some point. Seems interesting. Could be cool. Uh, especially considering that sword forgers work with a lot of fire. Maybe we'll end up on a, a, a quest to go figure this stuff out that way. I don't know. It's an option. Um, Sister, Shinobu Kocho, Kanae Kocho, Decide with a Coin Flip, Akari, Shiro, Fire Breathing. That's all I have written down. Um, yeah. Okay. But it's not fire breathing. Rengoku might know something about this, but he is on a mission. And then we have another moment to talk with, with Nezuko, and. It's in his head, but is it from inside his head, or is it from outside his head? There's no way to know, is there? It's not worth to- uh, even talking about. But this just happened. Nezuko may be telepathic, which would be really helpful, because she could talk. It also may be only a thing that could happen while she's asleep. I don't know. And then we have a, a train. With a fucking creepy looking demon on it, with a really crazy eyes. Like, really crazy eyes. It's also got uh, spikes and horns on it, very much like those triplet demons that we saw the once. But, uh, oh, yeah, it's got multiple faces. There are multiple mouths there. So it's it's not just three eyes in a misshapen head. It's multiple faces. I wonder if they're separate. No, we see only the one, the one head-like entity. It doesn't have two necks, so it's just multiple distorted, contorted faces smashed onto one skull that's nice and creepy and then the next episode will be new mission which again is an interesting place to to end a show for the last episode um but it is i mean i'm i'm super certain they're gonna get a second season uh it would it would take like bad juju for them to not get a second season so if they do a off we go to the new mission catch us next season that would work in any case a cool episode a cool little window into into kano uh and beyond that like some interesting history of the pillars especially the the kochos the kocho family interesting interesting stuff and some genuine progress on the training some making moves and beyond that an amazing shinobu scene where she does exactly what she needs to do to get uh, Zenitsu and Inosuke, like, into the training thing. Pissed off or, you know, turned on. <laughs> all in all, a pretty solid episode. Cool. That's gonna be it for me, so let's wrap it up. I've been Tiabu. This has been Kimetsu no Yaiba, episode 25. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope to catch you next week in the next one. Peace. <laughs>